Hi guys! Welcome to our channel! Mr. Raffle Waffles here. No. <laughs> Date night. <laughs> he doesn't do zombies anymore. We can steal his intro. Now is Milo. our time. No. Milo. <laughs> um, so, oh, sorry. sorry, the couch keeps scooting backwards. But we, this is just a video, um, you know, going over the Shadows of Evil Pack a Punch. So that's super exciting. I know this is super late in the game, and my voice is getting slightly more robotic as we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just wanted to have, you know, tutorials and everything on the channel, and I've been playing Shadows a lot more lately. Um, I'll be playing Garod here pretty soon, but yep. um, we've been doing a lot of Shadows, so I just wanted to have a tutorial for everything on the channel, so I'll be expecting, um, especially more Shadows, but just some more tutorials in the upcoming future. So let's just poop on our stick! Let's get started! Welcome so in back. this clip, you grab your scissors, and you murder someone, and that's how you win the game. <laughs> <laughs> the end. No, I just wanted to start it off uh, before we load in, just to kind of give what to do when you first spawn in. Um, so what I always do is I grab the fumigator as quickly as possible. I get the extra points from quick revive. There's a little Easter egg over here that if you throw a grenade um, at the good time at that corner, so like good meaning it explodes in the corner, not bounces off and goes down. And grab a ticket and get an extra 500 points. Yeah. Oh wow, I didn't know that. Um, so then just grab your gobble gum. Um, chew it, get, preferably. Chew it preferably. Just not just hold it into your hand. <laughs> hold it throughout the whole game. Um, I usually get the extra 100 points and then I'll activate beast mode. Um, a large majority of this tutorial is going to be beast mode stuff, just because you really want to maximize um, your beast modes. It's uh, It totally makes or breaks the game if you're proficient in each one of them since you only get a set amount per round. Um, you just want to do exactly as I do, as much as possible. Everything up until me jumping on the thing is mandatory for this first ritual. Um, this is just mandatory if you want to set up for later on um, quicker. It might as well if you have time. Might as well, yeah. And then just grab the free drop. That could be either a max ammo, a insta kill, or a double points. Obviously, you prefer it to be a double points, but um, with the extra 500 ticket, you won't notice that much of a difference. So max ammos are nice. So grab the fountain pen there. That's each ritual is going to pertain to an object that leads to a character. Um, the fountain pen leads to Nero, the uh, the magician. Um, and each section of the map will have a object and a ritual. And completing all four of the rituals is what you do for pack a punch. So is the ritual the thing with the worm? Yes. Okay. That's so that's the first one we're doing now. Um, now that we have the fountain pen, we're gonna go up to Nero's library above the spawn. Um, shocking that box in beast mode open up the stairs and then you just place the fountain pen and the summoning key on the table and run in circles. This is a, uh, a timed sequence, not a kill base sequence. So I normally just ignore everything because you don't really get points at either for killing the keepers. So why either go out of your way or potentially waste ammo. And potentially kill a last zombie if you have it. Exactly. Uh, if the last zombie's in the room and the ritual ends, uh, it has a chance of tr spawning a drop because the zombie won't be there anymore. It won't necessarily kill the zombie, it'll just despawn. Um, so it won't end your round, but you could potentially get a drop from them. Um, then I'm just going to board the window because on round one you can board a window fully and that's all you can get for your points. So I would just board one window and then move on with my day. And you could technically do these in any particular order you'd like. I always just do the... Um, Oh god, what is this one called? I didn't see what it's called. The one on the far left. It starts with an F. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this one's pretty easy to um, just open up the rift area, shock the perk machine, jump over to here to knock down the object you need for the ritual. And if you have time, jump and use your right trigger for sling to sling you up to the back and then shock that. That's opening the door that leads to the ritual itself. Um, then you just grab, uh, what was that, a hairbrush? Something like that? It's the, the girl's one. Um, the girl, I don't I like remember they her name. for a hairbrush, like, what the Yeah, hell? I, I don't know what that is. It's either, like, a hairpin or a hairbrush. I don't a remember. A hair thing? <laughs> a hair object, yes. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, I dare you. Footlight district, that's the one I do first. <laughs> um, so then I'll just open up the rift and then go and get, um, that, once you go to the rift the first time, the underneath section... It'll spawn, I think, four or five keepers. Uh, just knife them real quick, and then they'll go away. I always come down here to get the extra points from the perk machines. Um, the next door leading to uh, the next ritual, I think, is 1250 points. 
So you just want to make up the difference in the perk machines and killing the rest of the zombies but one. Um, typically, if you get the free 500 points from the ticket, you will be able to do this ritual in round one as well. You just want to do the majority of them. I usually try to knock out about three rituals on round one, just because you do have three beast modes on solo. If you have four players that all know the beast modes, you could potentially do Pack-a-Punch on round one, if y'all are proficient enough with the stuff. Um, so just like the first one, place down your object in the summoning key, so you need to click or hold down square twice, and then run around in circles. Um, on rituals two and four, um, it will spawn a Margwa, and then on the Pack-a-Punch ritual, it will spawn a Margwa. And they're quite easy to dispatch, just, you know, keep your distance, play it safe, as you don't have Jug at this point yet, and just shoot the mouths whenever they open and are golden. Um, they have three, just shoot them all until you do enough damage, and then they'll go away. Um, as for the, the parasites or the mosquitoes that they release when you shoot off a mount, I usually leave them just in case the last zombie dies during the fight. The mosquitoes will count as a zombie and eventually will despawn and respawn as a zombie. Um, so it will not end the round if you still have a mosquito floating around. Plus, aren't they just there like, to distract you, basically? They are. They do not do much damage at all. They are Their primary focus is to distract you, primarily to die by the Marwa, but realistically to die by anything. Yeah. They're just there to be annoying, which is so funny to me. This <laughs> big troll on Treyarch. Um, so yeah, you don't have Jug. Just keep your distance. Shoot the Margwa. The Margwa's going to give you a crap load of points. I believe it's f either 1,500 or 1,000 per mouth. Um... Oh, I have 2,100, so it must be like... A little bit less. Yeah, a little right. bit less, but it, they give you points per mouth. Um, <clears throat> then I'm, I'm going to take the train. You technically could just go to the next district. I take the train because it's only 500 points to ride the train, and because you can get your, uh, your symbols for the sword, which will be covered in a later tutorial. Um, but I'm going to go to Waterfront next. I believe each door on the front is 750, and then the next ones are usually 1250, so spending 500 for the train to get to the next area is not a bad expense at all. This, in my opinion, is the uh, easiest for mandatory beast mode stuff, and the hardest for extra beast mode stuff. Um, so you're just going to run down all the way to the end of the docks here and open the door there. Um, run all the way back up and then jump and grapple to this area right up there. That box is going to contain the title belt, which is the next relic. Then that door, that's the end of the mandatory stuff. So then I usually try to run up here, grapple up here, and turn on the perk machine and open up the Cthulhu statue. I didn't get that on this one, but it's very difficult for the extra stuff, but it's it's the easiest one in my opinion for the regular, the regular stuff. There's only three things you really need to do. So that's the title belt, that's the one where the wrestler is? Yes, the, the boxer guy. The guy that uses brass knuckles underneath his gloves. <laughs> and kills people? And kills people, yeah. Me. It's funny because in the actual intro scene for this, whenever they're around the zombies, the boxer just starts running around punching zombies in the face. <laughs> um, so just run it down to the, the, the ring here, place the belt and the summoning key, run in circles. Um, this area is more compact than most areas, so just make sure you're, you know, able to think on your feet and watch around. As you see here, there's one here, one there. I noticed to my left there were two more coming, so I ran up the stairs to the right. Um, you can kill them with knives on round one, but they, it's very easy for them to circle around you and you will go down if you're not running it smart. Grab your worm. Uh, I'm going to go back up to the train station. Again, you don't need to use the trains, but I am. And then I'm going to use my extra, because uh, I have 900 points, I'm going to use 500 of those to go to the last area, the canals. But I'm out of beast modes. Um, so once you reach the canals, just end the round and then keep a zombie for the next round. Um, and then that's where we're probably going to pick up here in the next clip. Actually, I'm getting off the train because I needed it to show that for you know proof that I've actually ridden a train in my life. <laughs> Um, so I've ended the round, kept a zombie, I've opened up this gate, and then I'm going to run down and then open up the rift area that we opened up on round one. Um, that was the extra area that we got to after we opened up the spawn room. And then we are going to enter beast mode and then do all the other stuff. The stuff. The stuff. Um, why opening up the rift before beast mode is helpful. Um, I didn't take note of the symbols in this uh, playthrough just because I was going for pack a punch purely. Um, but if you were, you can go down to the rift and then open up your swords wall section in this beast mode if you're careful enough. 
I don't, so I just ran down and then opened up a few extra perks. Um, but if you do as I did just there, you're done already with the mandatory stuff. I just ran to the rift, opened up Widow's Wine, and then ran up and opened up Mule Kick. Just because extra time, why not? Also, though, you only get one more per round. You only get three at the start and then one per round. And then if you run down to these area down here, you'll be able to collect the badge, which is the cops one. Interestingly enough that the cops section of the map is the little, like, dancer club area. You freaking corrupted cop, you. This isn't yeah, Gotham. Yeah, nasty. Um, and this is ritual number four, so just be careful. After you finish the ritual, it will spawn a Margua. Um, broken record there. But just head up to the club. It's going to be on the second floor of this. Is going to be your summoning table for the uh, badge and summoning key. And then, again, run around. Um, nice area, a lot of space, and you do have a second floor here. So if you do start to see them get clumpy down here, um, just run upstairs real quick and then just jump off. That way they'll start to follow you up the stairs and it kind of like resets the process. I do that real quick. Um, but they can spawn upstairs, so just be careful. They can spawn out of any of the red, red smoky... Portals. Yes, precisely. The portals, yeah. The portals to hell. <laughs> yeah. Um, collect your gate worm. Margo will spawn up here, so I usually just check down the stairs for a zombie, and then I just pop the mouth off real quick, or attempt to anyways. <clears throat> and then I run out of the club just because sketchy area to oh, be in yeah, with a Margo. with a big clumpy boy. <laughs> um, check the stairs for zombie. I pop up a couple extra shots and then go down the stairs. It's a very easy area to... It's got a lot of room, but it's very easy to get cornered, so I always check zombies before I go anywhere. Just because that's, you know, that's what Treyarch wants. They want you to be center-focused on this big behemoth running at you that you don't notice the parasites or the zombie or all the above. So just be light on your feet. Pop shots here and there. Try to get the mouth covered. Um, try to be more um, preservative with your bullets than I am. I'm just fucking spraying at this point. Um, but this is also a nice, um, good RNG on my side, because after I kill this Margot here, I am going to get a max ammo, um, which is very, very nice. Uh, making it possible for me to open up Pack-a-Punch purely by using the starting pistol, which is in itself very weird. Um, so after that Margot, you're just going to go back down to that rift area that we opened up earlier. Um, and now on the wall with the symbols, each one is going to be lit up, opening up the Pack-a-Punch area. Um, you're going to have four little pedestals to place each of those gate worms on. Um, the first two gate worms are going to open up a wall run section on the side there, which you'll notice after I put up the second gate worm. And then the last two is going to open up a bridge section in the middle, so you don't have to wall run back if you don't want to. I never wall run back just because the wall run isn't difficult, but it makes me anxious if you're in like a game with low con connection. Um, you can just straight up fall off the wall and die. <laughs> Rip in the chat, Fs in the chat, there ain't no saving you. Um, yeah. <laughs> Nose emojis. Nose emojis. Um, behind me, that blue swirly thing was the Pack-a-Punch. Um, once you complete this final ritual by placing the summoning key on there and then running around the map as per usual, you will be able to use Pack-a-Punch. But it will spawn a Margwa as, you know, again, because this game because just, why not? This game just throws Margwas at you 24-7. Which I really don't complain with because they are great point generators. They're I'm, not that hard. They're, they're not they're hard themselves. either, yeah. I mean, I'm going into this ritual just now finishing it with a, just over 3,000 points, and now I'm going to get more points from the Margwa here. Um, so just, again, play it safe, kill the Margwa. This is also a wonderful time after you've done all these rituals to get stuff like Juggernaug and a decent gun. Just because after I kill the Margwa here, I'm probably going to have close to 5,000 points. So you technically could pack a punch the starting pistol if you want to. I just don't because I down myself with explosive stuff all the fucking time because there's no <laughs> PhD in this game. Except for Danger Closest, but that only lasts for three rounds and you have to spin the RNG luck to get it in the gobblegum machine. Um, so there's the Margo right there. Um, I think I'm actually going to show it as a thing. Like, look, Juggernaug, wow! Um, on this map, the perk machines do move, so just be sure to know the perk locations. And then there's the Pack-a-Punch machine putting the gun in there. Um, and I think I'm going to either run back or wall run back. And shoot the parasite, because, you know, animal cruelty is a good thing to roll about on this No. No. <laughs> Alright, but that's it for that. Thanks guys so much for watching. More tutorials coming soon. That was Pack Punching on Shadows Evil. See you guys See you later. In the next one.